Texas State students could have an extra day off before finals next semester. Now, who doesn't love a little doom and gloom with their popcorn? A recent congressional report suggests that the U.S. Secret Service may be overburdened. People Magazine has named their 24th Sexiest Man Alive for 2009. Texas State University and the city of San Marcos are in talks to restore the Sesame Creek watershed. The project will decrease the amount of dirt found at the bottom of the San Marcos River. The dirt builds up after filtering down from the university's property and into Sesame Creek. The restoration of the watershed will be a multi-million dollar project and take anywhere from 10 to 15 years to complete. 40% of the watershed is owned by Texas State, and the rest is owned by San Marcos. Funds required for the restoration will come from the Environmental Protection Agency and other federal agencies. Once the watershed is completed, the university, the San Marcos community, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services will look into dredging the river as the next step. Not everyone agrees that this is a good idea. I don't think it's necessary. I think what's here is here. It shouldn't be moved. It's part of the river. It's part of Sewell Park. Dredging the river will require transplanting some of the endangered Texas wild rice that grows there. The rice may be moved to other parts of the river or to the National Fish Hatchery for further research. Director of the Aquatic Station at Texas State, Tim Bonner, says moving the rice would benefit the river and community. Transplant those Texas wild rice elsewhere so that it's more of a recreational area for the students. Bonner and the scientific community feel that this would help the river prosper and would not hurt any of the endangered wild rice. Dredging of the wild rice in the San Marcos River will cause water levels to rise, making river recreation easier and more enjoyable for everyone. For Bobcat Update, I'm Amanda Dugan. Thanks to the recent rainfall in San Marcos, water levels have been bumped up to 660 feet, which is significant because it means the city's water restriction level has been reset to stage one. Citizens can find some differences between stage one and stage two. Sure, yeah, the primary difference comes in the watering, the lawn watering restrictions. Uh, in both stage one and stage two, it's one day a week. But in stage one, you've got a longer watering window on that particular day. Restaurants may only serve water to customers upon request, and residents are still only permitted specific days to water their lawns. The city has established various rebate programs to help promote water conservation. We also encourage people to conserve water year-round, and we do that through our rebate and incentive programs. Uh, they encourage people to use efficient um, toilets and clothes washers, shower heads. Associate Professor of Biology Tim Bonner says that low water levels can be bothersome for those who conduct experiments at the campus ponds. A lot of these were common uh, sport fish and things like that that didn't have much of a conservation uh, concern. Local wildlife has also been affected by the recent drought. For the last year, it, it has made these ponds difficult for our students to use. If you have concerns about the drought response rules, the San Marcos Utilities Building has pamphlets available that can help further answer your Stage 1 water restriction questions. For Bobcat Update, I'm Amanda Dugan. It has been 10 years since the bonfire collapse tragedy on the Texas A&M campus claimed the lives of a dozen students. Students were building a 59-foot tower as part of an annual football season tradition on the eve of the game against the University of Texas. This week, that tragedy was commemorated at the collapse site, and more than 3,000 people attended. The bonfire tradition is no longer sanctioned by the university, but it continues as an off-campus activity.